welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup. Let's take a look at the headlines. America is back, said President-elect Joe Biden, as he introduced a new national security team. As holidays near, the coronavirus is spreading rapidly, putting families in a dilemma about celebrations and travel. Pompeo hits out at CCP again for failing to alert the world about COVID-19. Israeli minister reveals covert contacts with Saudi Arabia. Chinese spacecraft sets off on moon. UK and Canada agree to keep trading under EU terms. Hundreds killed in massacre in Ethiopia's Tigray, Wright's body revealed recently. India and Indian diaspora around the globe marked the 12th anniversary of Mumbai terror attack. Pakistan minister apologizes for calling France President Emmanuel Macron Nazi, deletes tweet. Starting with President-elect Joe Biden's viral statement, America is back. He said it while presenting his picks for a Secretary of State, National Security Advisor, Homeland Security Secretary, Intelligence Chief, UN Ambassador and Climate Change Envoy in an event in his hometown. But America is back. Today, I'm pleased to announce nominations and staff for critical foreign policy and national security positions in my administration. It's a team that will keep our country and our people safe and secure. And it's a team that reflects the fact that America is back. Biden said that after he is inaugurated on January 20th, 2021, and Donald Trump leaves the White House, the United States will once again sit at the head of the table, ready to confront our adversaries and not reject our allies. But America is back, ready to lead the world, not retreat from it. Once again, sit at the head of the table, ready to confront our adversaries and not reject our allies. Looking at the COVID situation, the holidays look remarkably different this year due to COVID-19. Months into the global pandemic, we continue to see how family gatherings are often responsible for spreading the virus, sometimes with fatal consequences. Unfortunately, that means making major adjustments to our holiday traditions if we want to protect grandma, grandpa, and other vulnerable relatives. Now talking about the U.S.'s response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The U.S. Secretary of State, Michael Pompeo, once again hit out at Beijing, more specifically the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, for failing poorly to alert the world about COVID-19. The Secretary of State said that it even silenced brave Chinese citizens who tried to disseminate any information about the virus that originated from Wuhan. I want to start with a topic uh, that's on everyone's mind, the battle against the pandemic from Wuhan. Many people in America, in Kuwait and around the world are suffering because the Chinese Communist Party failed to properly alert the world that it had a public health disaster on its hands. It silenced brave Chinese citizens. Moving on to the Middle East situation, the Israeli cabinet minister revealed that Israel has had covert contacts with Saudi Arabia amid common concerns over Iran. The first disclosure by a senior official from either country of long-rumored secret dealings. Both Saudi Arabia and Israel view Iran as a main threat to the Middle East, and increased tension between Tehran and Riyadh has fueled speculation that shared interests may push Saudi Arabia and Israel to work together. Let's have a look at China's move towards the moon. It's been more than 40 years since the Americas and the Soviets brought home lunar rock and soil for analysis. China aims to be the only and third country to achieve this feat, which will be an extremely complex endeavor. Talking about the Canada and UK trade deal, Britain and Canada on Saturday resolved to negotiate a new bilateral trade deal in 2021, rolling over the terms of the EU's CETA trade agreement with Canada. Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Justin Trudeau sealed the rollover pact in a video call. British Trade Secretary Liz Truss and her Canadian counterpart, Trade Minister Mary Ng, also joined on the call. Thank you all very much for joining this call. It's a historic day. Uh, listen, Boris, it's just so great, uh, great to see you. Uh, uh, I know you're in isolation, but glad to glad to connect with you at home. Uh, this is uh, this is a good uh, a good moment. We're all living with uh, COVID nineteen, but there's uh, lots of other things we need to get going as well. 
uh, and the trade relationship and the historic relationship between Canada and the UK. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Prime Minister. Bonjour à tous. And it really is great to be here with uh, Prime Minister Johnson and great to see you again, Liz. And thank you both for joining us uh, virtually from London for this important, uh, for this important uh, news. Well, thank you very much, Mary, and it's fantastic to be here today with our two Prime Ministers. The deal that we've negotiated secures certainty for British and Canadian businesses, safeguarding tens of thousands of jobs. Now the international news channel's Eye on Africa. Hundreds killed in a massacre in Ethiopia's Tigray. Raid's body revealed recently. A local youth group aided by police and militia killed at least 600 people in a rampage on November 9th in Ethiopia's northern Tigray region. The national raid's watchdog revealed recently. We came to know about this, uh, these killings from a report by the rights group Amnesty International. Uh, it calls what happened in the northern state of Tigray in a place called Mykandra uh, a, a massacre. Uh, it says that scores and possibly hundreds uh, were killed. Uh, Amnesty International is saying that they have confirmed those people that are killed uh, were not fighters, they were civilians. Talking about the anniversary of Mumbai 2611 terror attack. India and Indian diaspora around the globe marked the 12th anniversary of Mumbai terror attack this week. Indian diaspora recalled the horrors of this terror attack. In Toronto, Hindu Forum Canada arranged the mobile truck with pictures and video clips that paraded the busy streets of the greater Toronto areas. The mobile truck also went to the Pakistan consulate Vaughan office to protest against the terror attack. It's been 12 years since the horrendous terror attacks on Mumbai were carried out. On 26 November 2008, 10 lashkar taiba terrorists sneaked into Mumbai from Pakistan and went on the rampage, carrying out coordinated attacks at different locations in India's financial capital, which claimed the lives of 166 people. As India marks the 12th anniversary of this heinous attack, the real perpetrators and masterminds of the attacks are still roaming free in Pakistan. A report. To mark the 12th anniversary of this barbaric attack, India paid tributes to those who laid down their lives while fighting terrorists. Victims and survivors remembered those brave hearts who firmly stood against the perpetrators and fought with valor in a bid to save the lives of scores of people. Indians living in Canada also organized an LED truck advertisement campaign across many cities of greater Toronto areas against Pakistan's terrorist attack and demanded Canada's Legislative Assembly to press Pakistan for justice with all victims. Another shocking story from Pakistan. A Pakistani minister has accused Macron of treating Muslims like Jews were treated by Nazi Germany during World War II. Pakistan's Minister for Human Rights, Shireen Mazari, not only accused Macron of being a Nazi, but also shared a fake news related to the Charter of Republican Values on his Twitter account. After this, France lodged a robust objection on the Pakistan minister's statements, and Shireen Mazari was compelled to delete all his tweets related to the issue. Macrons were doing the same to the Muslims as the Nazis were doing to the Jews. Muslim children will get an ID and other children will not be given. In order to recognize this, Jews were forced to wear a yellow star on their clothes, Shireen Mazari had tweeted last Saturday. However, it added fuel to the fire when Minister of Pakistan's Imran government shared a fake news about Macron on asking the French Council of the Muslim Faith to accept a charter of Republican values within 15 days. Angered by this tweet by the Pakistan minister, the Minister of Europe and Foreign Affairs of France issued the statement asking to withdraw Mazari's objectionable statement. That's all for you. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.